Okay, ArtistRelations.com has asked me to go into a little more detail about these Zephyr Silver Series pickups. So I want to describe sort of how we came about the different feature sets that we put into these pickups. The first thing that was apparent is that we were going to wind these pickups with silver wire. Silver is a better conductor, and what we found when you wind a pickup, an equivalent pickup with silver wire, it's not only burstier with more attack and more dynamics, but the extreme top end and the extreme bottom end uh, go out farther. In other words, it's not that there's more treble and more bass and that they've been boosted or they're, they're, they're coming at you in a, in a hi-fi type, type of sound. It's that it's extended. So if normally you wouldn't hear above 15, you know, 10 or 15K with a certain pickup, uh, in silver wire you will. You'll hear 15K, 18K, 20K. And that, that plays some, some interesting tricks on amplifiers too because amps you know <clears throat> are voiced to sound the way they sound basically with the pickups that we've been using for 50 60 years and so when you put one of these guys into an amp with a great clean channel it's just sparkling and there's so much more clarity and depth and, and detail uh, than you can get out of an equivalent copper wire pickup but when you put it into overdrive that's where we really got surprised because you would think that these differences would be masked by overdrive and you know by a tube amplifier overdriving but on the contrary some of these differences, some of the differences in the pick attack actually became more apparent. Um, when we say there's more mid-range, more tone density in the mid-range, what we mean is there's just more um, there's just there's just more fundamental uh, in the lower mid-range and the mid-range. But the attack and the dynamics are more apparent even in the mid-range and the lower mid-range. So even if you had an amp that was dark sounding and didn't have any top end, the burstiness and the immediacy and the attack on the mid-range and the lower mid-range are still going to come through that amp. So, you know, we talked to, uh, like you talked to Phil, our CEO, he says, I, I doesn't matter what amp you play it through, you will still hear a difference. The question is what difference and to what degree. But we've played them on, you know, uh, Mesa Mark V has a great clean channel. Uh, and all that top end, like I said, was, was really apparent. You put it through like a 65 amp um, where they really have a minimized the amount of circuitry in there. Do you get a really pure, clean sound? Um, the differences are just just astounding. Um, and so these pickups are, we, well, we, one of the things we want people to understand is, you know, they're not for everybody. I mean, if you're plugging in and you're playing at a billion decibels uh, through a cranked up Marshall that's just, you know, about to, to explode, um, maybe these subtle differences, you know, would be lost on you. I don't know. But when you're in the studio, when you are really being critical about your sound, uh, that's where some of these differences can kind of come into play. The bimetallic pole piece that's used on the humbucker, we went through extensive testing, but uh, I mean, to, to just think about how you come up with that, you know, st a steel outer core drilled out for a, you know, outer piece drilled out for a nickel core, um, what ends up happening is the, uh, the magnetic field as it passes through that material, you know, one material conducts the magnetic field differently than the other, so you get a greater complexity in the way that the magnetic field is being delivered to the string. Now it's only on the slug coil, the screw coil is still our traditional screw uh, it, it, that we use in the pickup, but uh, still, like, just shocking that, you know, you could really hear such a difference um, in the density of the sound just from changing the pole pieces across one of the two coils. The cryogenic freezing process, um, you know, depending on who you talk to, they'll say it, you know, aligns the crystalline structures or this and that. There's a lot of ways that people, uh, even in the hi-fi industry, will describe cryogenic treatment. Um, what I can tell you is that it is audible. So we can apply any kind of terminology we want to it, but you can hear the difference when you plug it in. So we have two identical pickups, they sound the same, we cryogenically treat one, it comes back sounding different. And uh, the Gauss strength is still the same, so it's not based on any alteration on the magnetism. Uh, so that's not a variable in this case, uh, but the pickups absolutely sound 
sound difference. So there's a lot of differences in these pickups. It's going to take a while for some people, some artists, to get these in their guitars, start playing them, and start coming up with their own ways of describing what it's doing for them and why how it sounds through their amplifier before everyone really begins to take a grasp, get a grasp of uh, of, of what these pickups can really do for for, for you. But uh, all I can tell you is that here at Seymour Duncan, we're very proud to be pushing the envelope and offer these to you guys. Thanks.